Well, so this, so you have seen the two important uh, types of aggression, right? Already, and uh, in the second part of the lecture, we'll talk about much complex aggression techniques, correct? Which are widely used in machine learning, correct? So the two important machine uh, regression methods which are used is one is called Ridge, other one is called Lasso. Ridge and Lasso are used when you have certain kinds of problems in your machine learning methodology. So, we will discuss one by one about that. Basically, when you have overfitting of data, then only these two regression methods are used. So, we will discuss separately about that. One is called Ridge, other is called Lasso. These are very uh, important in the terms of this. It is useful when your goal is to you know minimize the impact of less important features, Ridge is very useful. That means, uh, when you have multiple features and you want to incorporate all the features in your model, features means obviously variables right, you must have understood by this time and uh, you want to minimize, you want to use all the variables in your model, you do not want to remove some variables, but you want to minimize the effect of less important variables while keeping the all variables in the model. That is what happens in Ridge. Lasso what is done? It is preferred uh, you know when the feature selection is uh, resulting in very simpler model and interpretation is difficult then only it is ok. So, let me let me basically give you perspectives of that and uh, this is a both are actually regularized uh, uh, regression model. That means, uh, they are different from the standard regression model like linear or polynomial or nonlinear models ok. So, what is that is done? Let us talk about that first. Let us try to build a linear regression model first, then it will clear, clear why you want to use this. So, let us talk about you know that uh, I have data. So, I have this kind of plots, this is training data. And these are the instances. So, what kind of training data we have? Let us use the different color. So, I have this kind of training data. So, I can clearly see I can fit a nice linear line correct, nice linear relationship between these points, very simple nice right. This is the best fit line possible. Can you see on the board there is a best fit line possible, right? This best fit line is passing through all the points. That means what error is 0 or the loss function is 0. This means that tending data will have very good accuracy. That is fine, but I cannot ensure such a good accuracy for my testing data, right? As I told you, we have a lot of data. You divide the data into two parts, one for training the model, other one is for the testing the model. Let us take you have taken the training data in such a way that that error loss function is 0. That means, our training data have very good accuracy, but you know your test data may not have that good accuracy. That means, this kind of training will give to overfitting that is not good idea right if it is going to overfitting. So, in order to take care of this kind of problem what you can do that is what let us discuss in order to take care of this kind of problem what you can do is to basically we can do a best fit line with some error and that is what is used in ridge regression. So, let me plot it and show you again what you can do. So, this is your training data and instance remember if you do overfitting what will happen your accuracy go to 100 percent and machine learning whenever you see accuracy goes to 9900 percent that means there is overfitting that is not a good idea never always remember that. So, what do you do very simple. So, as usual we keep we have uh, some points right, but we also take some more points like that which are not coming for this line and then we take a best fit line in such way that it also incorporates some errors. If you do that then you can avoid overfitting. Now, you must be thinking why this is required, yes this is required because your data 
selection may be problematic. In data selection problematic means why your data may not be uh, sub segregated as such a way that uh, you know training will give you best fit, but your testing will give you less fit, right. So, if you want to test the model uh, using this best fit training data, it will give you very high accuracy and that means, it is going to give you overfitting. And in that cases, you have to consider we need to find a best fit line with some errors. Here you can see there are a lot of errors, okay. some error is there, some error is there, some error is there, right? some error is there. The line is not going to those points. So, now once you do that, once you have uh, done that, uh, then you are this is basically done in ridge regression. We will talk about in lasso what is done. So, now in mathematically what you are doing? Mathematically what you are doing is basically adding an extra term. Let us talk about that in case of ridge. Uh, what we do is very simple, we add an extra term, what is known as a, uh, in case of let us talk about ridge first and then we talk about lasso. So, in case of ridge we got an extra term, what is that extra term we do? Very simple, remember j w, okay. j w is this. So, minimization of this x w minus y whole square plus lambda or not lambda alpha, this is called L 1 to renormalization in the statistics, L 1 to renormalization. Okay. So, what you are doing basically these are your weights, remember that these are weight w's are weights basically in the whole model. right? For equations what you have written is very simple that is equal to y i is equal to w 0 plus w 1 x 1 or w 2 x 2 goes up to w n x n plus error. right? So, these w's are weights. So, we are putting we are taking absolute values of w's correct and we are putting a parameter alpha and this is called L 1 to normal renormalization okay, term in the statistical literature this whole thing it is called this one is L 1 to normalization term. Let me see what is the book has telling that is better regularization term not renormalization L 1 to regularization because there is a square term that is why it is called regularization. regularization. That is what is done in case of ridge. Now, if I you know I will show you what will happen if I plot Jw as a function of w correct. So, let us do that plot as for different values of lambda. How do you look like? Let us see that. Okay. So, uh, let us say for lambda equal to 0, for lambda equal to that term has no value. So, lambda equal to 0 this is how it will look like. Sorry, that is alpha is equal to 0 not lambda, I have been taking talking about lambda by writing alpha, this is equal to alpha. Okay. So, that has a you know minima here at on 0.6, let us talk. Then you can also have lambda is equal to some other value. Okay. That is sorry alpha equal to, let us say this is equal to alpha equal to 10 and also take uh, alpha equal to 20. Okay, you can see that the error is decreasing as you increase the alpha value. Okay. And uh, not only that, the value of w is also shifting to the lower side. That means, compared to 0.6 when lambda alpha is equal to 0, it is going to 0.2 when alpha equal to 20. That indicates, if I selectively use alpha and w or they actually combine actually not selective, then I can reduce the error quite a lot. Extensively, I can reduce the error. That is my purpose actually. I want to draw the line, but not a best fit line incorporating certain amount of error, but error has to minimize. right? The error can be minimized when I use certain values of alpha and w. 
So, these two are connected as you can clearly see if I take very high value of alpha for a very low value of w this error will be very small okay, this is j w. Remember this is the starting point. So, error is calculated from this okay, this line. So, more the, the higher the distance from the line higher is the error. So, that is what is done is ridge regression. Okay. This is widely used in many many uh, you know simulation purposes, but what is done in lasso? What is done in lasso? So, lasso is little different instead of square we use only only this what is called linear. Okay. This is the lead regularization term here. Here is a very simple regularization term called that okay, alpha w and remember w absolute value of w is used not the actual value. It can be negative positive also this w is can be negative or positive, but uh, here we are using absolute absolute values of sorry the mod value means positive values of the w. So, here also we can do the similar kind of plots and many people call this alpha let me tell you hyperparameter. And they call this process a hyperparameter tuning, correct? So, because you are changing the value of this in your model and then try to find out the minimum error. See, the idea is to find the best fit line incorporating some amount of errors so that it does not lead to overfitting. But when you do this kind of best fit line with some error, you cannot keep on increasing the error, right? You have to minimize error, that is the idea. So, let me go back to our discussion again. So, for the lasso, very simple lasso also one can plot the error in the same way. Okay, I will do that. So, lasso in the board it is very easy. If you want to do it in your classroom, you have to redraw the whole picture, but board we can erase and draw it. So, in lasso what will happen? So, let us take this is your 0. Right, and now uh, I'll draw three curves again. This is equal to alpha equal to zero. And then alpha equal to ten, alpha equal to twenty. Yes, this will be a little bit flatter. alpha equal to 10, alpha equal to 20 correct. So, these are remember this is schematic diagrams. So, one can plot it with certain values. So, as you can clearly see that uh, this this is not drawn properly we have to read oops. So, error is slowly going down this way as you in, as you increase the alpha values and w required w values are also going down right that is what it is. You have to take the minimum value of this. So, that is what is done in case of lasso and uh, remember these uh, regressions are widely used. So, therefore, it is better you read little bit and learn. Next 10 minutes or so, we will talk about something different, something which is called the classification. So, classification is a again a machine learning task and what it does? It does basically identify the class belongs to a classifier. I will explain to it. Let us take uh, a discrete value classification problem. You are judging the people in your class. Right, based on three parameters age, marital status and health status. Well, then these are your levels, right? age is a level, marital status is a level, health status is a level, they are also features, okay? age, marital status, health status. Levels are actually values, 
So, you, you, you want to take age as a factor. So, in a class you have people age 18 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 and above right. So, that is how you can classify. Depending marital status, marital status there will be two types married or unmarried, health status also two types healthy or unhealthy right. So, that is how it is actually these are discrete values problem. Now, in the bank when somebody applies load they have two options either to give the loan or not to issue the loan. How they do they calculate the credit score right you go to the bank they will calculate your credit score then they will say whether if the loan will be issued or not that is nothing but a perspective input perspective input ok this is not uh, may not be reality. How do we calculate credit score based on whatever assets you have? Now, you may not declare all your assets, then it is a perception. Whenever you drive a car steering, either you can go to left or right, you can go to straight in the front or back, right. So, therefore, you can classify your motions into these four categories left, right, straight forward, straight backward. That is a classification problem. Well, when you classify documents, books, it can be politicals, politics, historical, biological, or many things, physics, chemistry, that is a classification. You can also do some instances, instances means some record, right? Attributes also. You can do classify them A1, A2, A N. Many of us do that, right? Many of us uh, do this kind of labeling. So, this labeling is actually classification. So, basically, as the name suggests, classification is the task of classifying things into some categories, subcategories. It is a supervised learning, like in case of your uh, you know regression, the supervised learning in which we use level data. Level data means you have input and output, both the values are known. It is a process of categorizing data or objects into predefined classes. Remember, predefined classes based on their features or attributes. You have to first define the classes, then you can put this uh, particular instance into this class or that class. The main objective is what is to build a model that can accurately assign a level or categorize a new observation based on its feature. That is what is our objective. To give you an example, I have already given an example. Let us say a classification model you say uh, basically trained based on the images. And images can be either labeled as a dogs or cats. So, you have lot of images, some are dogs and some are cats, and you have trained your model that this image is for dog, this image is for cat based on some features like color, texture, or shapes. And then you take a new picture or new image and ask this uh, your classification or classifier whether this is a picture of a dog or cat. That is exactly what classification does. So, graph of classification is based on some predefined classes. You cannot have undefined classes remember this. So, by the way if it, since you may forget you know what is supervised learning. In supervised learning you have input variables and output variables output basically and you use an algorithm to learn the mapping between input and output that is a function of y is a function of f x. Regression we do we did that and our goal is to approximate the mapping function. So, that when you have new data it can predict the output without much error that is what is the goal is. So, any supervised learning is that. Now, let us talk a little bit more about that and in classification we predict categorical class levels. It can be either discrete or nominal discrete we have already talked about it look at the age marital status or health and it classifies data or basically it develops a classification model based on the training sets into classification attributes or features using certain new data and it can do numerical prediction also models continuous variable functions like predict unknown or missing values and typically applications are I try to look credit or role approvals, medical diagnosis like a tumor is cancerous or benign, fraud detection is a transaction is fraudulent or not all kinds of problems can be easily handled and this is actually already been used in real life right banks are using fraud detection the machine learning based models doctors are using machine learning models. So, the tumor is cancerous or benign or not all kinds of things are already in the market. To impress you upon more how do you do the plant classification? 
uh, plants are classified into two parts right this is taken from textbook on, on SCBSC class 9. You can have seed growing plant, non seed growing plants. Seed grain plants can, can be flower growing plants, non flower growing plants and again flower growing plants can be have leaves which are like a net or leaves which have a highway like this you can see plant. paddy is a highway kind of plants, cotton is a dicot or leaves like looks like a net right. Now non flower growing plants can be two types again needle like leaves or fan separate leaves. Now, if you go to non seed growing plants you can have plants like uh, you know has stems and leaves and plants which does not have stems and leaves like your grass they do not go seeds many times right many of the grass. So, that is what this is a classification problem. So, you learn your, your computer like that train the computer like that then you give a new picture new picture of a plant it will be classifying into these categories. So, that means it is already predefined right. So, what is the difference between classification and regression? In regression algorithms are used to predict continuous numerical output. For example, it can be used to predict price of a house based on its size, location and other features. But classification algorithms are used to predict categorical output. It may not be numerical, it may be numerical, but most of the time it is produces categorical. Like classification algorithm used to predict whether email is spam or not, it can be done that. Many of your email servers use this, they before you check email they will categorize it is a spam or it says email. So, there are two types of classification, one is called binary classification other is called multi class classification. In binary we want to classify input into two classes of categories. Like for example, basis of health conditions of a person you can either have healthy or diseased right that is a binary classification. You can clearly see that this is one binary classification and another binary classification classes. You can also have multi class classifications here you want to classify input into several classes of categories. For example, based on different species of flower we can have determined the species what type of species right as you have known three different classes of flowers. So, that is our one can also have other kinds of classification also, but we may not discuss. But your learners can be two types remember this one is called lazy learners, other one is called eager learners. This is something not easy to understand. Let me explain uh, whatever I have written from different things which I have got right. So, what is lazy learner? Simply store the you know the learning data and then uh, wait until the test data appears. But eager learners will construct a classification based on the testing training data. So, this word will be training here not testing training data So, you store the training data and wait until the test data appears it can predict very fast method. But eager learners will construct a classification algorithm based on the training data and it will keep it ready and then it can do that. So, let me let me explain you much detail, detail better way. So, lazy learners actually are known as instant based learners remember that and they do not learn from any model during the training process. Instead they simply store the training data and then classify the new instances at the prediction time. So, it is very fast right in prediction time because it does not require any consultation process or computational process whatever you can say and it is but it is less effective it is effective in terms of very fast prediction, but it is less effective in higher dimensional spaces when you have many variables present right you can it is very less effective. On the other eager learners they actually known for as a model based learners and they learn from models basically and then give you the testing predictions very nicely. So, obviously, the eager learners are slow K n n is one of the uh, you know lazy learners ok, but uh, there are other models which can be also for learners and you know lazy learners also known as one is known by company uh, do not create a model at all. When instant arrives for testing it runs the algorithm and give the classification K n n classifier is that. Well, there are many uh, classification algorithms I just want to list it down logistic regression we will talk about that this is also pass of classification these entry K n n s type of K n n support vector machine A n n artificial neural network 
naive buyers, random forest, stochastic gradient descent, all these kinds of algorithms are available, even more available. But you know, I cannot discuss all of them, but I discuss few of them like logistic regression, DT, KNN, SBM, ANN, and naive buyers, or if possible, I will discuss also random forest. So, let us stop here and we will we'll get back to this classification algorithms in a detailed manner in the next lecture. Thank you. See you in the next lecture.